so the guys are ready. Gun is going hot. They have their 45 caliber gun with its large, slow-moving slug, perfect for this experiment, aimed by a laser at the tip of the match. Firing in three. Sure, this two, won't take long. One. Maybe it will. Not lit, not even gone. Apparently, it's too low. Despite Adam's pleasure at the quality of the high-speed shot. <laughs> that is so pretty. It's so crisp, you can see the reflection of the match head in the bullet. Even with laser-guided precision, they completely missed. So they're reverting to a more utilitarian method of marking the bullet's trajectory. Let's do it. Cardboard and trial and error. Three, two, one. Plenty of error. That's crazy high. Well, you shot the head right off. And plenty of try. Oh, it missed it. So close, but it's not touching it. Well, we're a few shots in, and we have not gotten the match to light yet, but <laughs> we're in the thick of it. So close! We knocked most of the red off the match without destroying it, so we're really really close. We're trying to get this grazing action without destroying the match head, which we've already done. Too high. We want to just graze the very tip of it. I don't know. To get one to light may take another few shots. May take another few hours. What do you think? I don't see no fire. No lit match. But a quick look at the high speed confirms they are on target. Ah, oh, perfect. It's just knocking off a little bit of the white there. Just barely touched it. That's what's required. Could that be myth busted? The bullet grazed the match head, but it didn't kickstart the chain of events that end in a lit match. <laughs> and to find out exactly what happens when you light a match, here's Jamie. This is how matches work. In the head of the match, you've got a fuel, which is a sulfur-based product. You've got an oxidizer, which is usually potassium chlorate. And you've got glass powder. It's all held together in a binder on the head of the match. The striker has glass powder, but it also has a small amount of red phosphorus. And when you strike the match on the striker, that glass-on-glass -glass friction generates enough heat to convert the red phosphorus into white phosphorus, which happens to burst into flames when it's exposed to air. Now, in a strike anywhere match like this one, all those same ingredients are on the head of the match. And so you can strike it on any abrasive surface. The same reaction occurs, generates heat, generates white phosphorus. You've got a lit match. And back on the range, despite feeling like they've got a busted myth on their hands, the guys lock and load for one last shot. Firing in three, two, one. Punch in. You asked for it, and we made it happen. Well, that's bully Mert. We did it. But keep in mind that it took us nine tries to make this happen. We had precision equipment, and the accuracy required was down to, you know, a thousandth of an inch or so. That's great. That is so cool. Well, I was wrong again. This was fully able to light this when they were only in contact for a 12,000th of a second. It's mighty short, but it's mighty confirmed. <laughs> All right, quick hit myths from the fan site. What do we have? Well, the first one comes from the movie Shrek. Can doggies talk? No, that's confirmed. Can we hear the real one? Okay, well, in the movie, Shrek uses his own earwax to make a candle. Ugh, that's disgusting. I'm interested, please go on. Okay, well, first we need to find out if earwax is flammable, and finally we need to collect lots and lots of it. I always wondered what was in my ears. You might want to get this checked out. It's a classic scene from the uh, green screen. Shrek pulls enough wax from his ears to form a fully functional, flammable candle. 